everyone know what test-driven development is? Or does anyone not want to own up to know what it isn't? <laughs> that they don't know what it is. Okay, who practices it religiously? Who feels naked if they can't write their test first? Okay, who wants to know how to do it better? Right, who's rebelliously against test-driven development in any shape or form? Okay, we haven't got it. Okay, so um, <clears throat> just uh, quickly recapping on what I can't remember was in the last talk, but anyway, we'll, we'll go through a few things. Um, Test-driven development is not about writing tests for the sake of writing tests. It's about increasing your confidence that your code changes can be deployed without incident or with the least amount of incident. Or to put that another way, it's to reduce the anxiety for when you hit, hit the red button, things aren't going to break in production. And you have to remember, you're always working in a team of at least three people, even if you're on your own. You're working with your past self that got you into the mess you're into today, you're working with your current self who is trying to fix it, and you're working and you're leaving a legacy for your future self. Okay, so you're always working in some sort of a team. Do we have batteries? We do. Right. Okay. Um, and the, the, the key principle of test driven development is what's called red green refactor, and it's really, really simple. You write a test that fails first, it does nothing, it, it gives you a big fat error, uh, and that's the red. You then write only enough code to make the test pass, that's the green part, and then the important thing is you refactor both your code and your test. Um, I'm happy to take questions as we're going along because it's probably easier uh, to do it that way. Um, I break tests into three types of tests. I don't know if the definitions are purest, but they're the ones that work for me. So we start with our unit test. A unit test is just testing an individual piece of code where all of the influences, the dependencies, are strictly controlled. Where we're controlling behavior, some might call it mocking, um, but we're just te testing code in isolation. The next step is to do um, integration tests where we've got code that, you know, unit tests are one thing, but you don't really know whether it's actually gonna work in, the, in a real environment. So an integration test might be testing where you're coupling it to a real database and you're doing real SQL queries and you're bringing back information and you're trying to see whether your, your service or whatever you're writing is actually working. And then the last type of um, test, at least in the back end, is what I call a functional test where you're actually running a, uh, a test against um, a, a, something like a RESTful endpoint against a, a staging environment or developing, uh, development environment that you've stood up or that's um, being invoked by the test runner itself. And then, okay, so just a, a, few, a, a few definitions. Um, people call, when I've already mentioned the word mocking, um, it's sort of a vernacular or a colloquialism that's used to cover the, the things that we inject into tests to try and uh, simulate behaviour. But um, the, the more correct term is test doubles. And we're dealing with a family of objects that we can use to help our tests. And just very quickly going through them, there's a thing called a stub. And a stub is used to return a specific value, like true or false or uh, hello or uh, some sort of predict predictable uh, string. Uh, use them a lot. Um, you, you should be using those a lot in your tests. The second type of object is a spy, which is used to track um, how a, an object or a method or a function is being called. So it might track the number of times it's being called, it might track the arguments that, that are being passed to it, but it doesn't actually do any sort of assertions. The thing you have to be careful with with spies is the more you spy on something, the tighter your test is coupled to your implementation. Now a mock by the strict de definition is an object that is a spy, so it's sort of monitoring things, and then it explicitly tests whether those, whether certain conditions um, have been met. So a test will run, you'll verify your mock, and uh, if it didn't run three times, it'll throw an error. Um, again, um, this is something, if you're not careful, um, you'll tightly couple your implementation against your mock, and when you're changing code, you'll also have to change your mocks. 
I have to say, I never use mocks. I never find um, uh, a need to do that. And then the last type of test object we have is a fake, which is a fully fledged object that simulates um, uh, different behavior on different inputs. So if um, Harold is logging in, he might be able to log in successfully, but Jane can't log, log in. The trouble with fakes is you actually have to write unit tests for your fakes to make sure that the, the fakes are working properly. I never use fakes. Um, so that's that. Um, the tooling I'll be using tonight is Mocha, um, Tape, that's the test runner. Um, tape is also popular. If you're Eric, Eric, Eric Elliot, you'll prefer Tape because it doesn't um, pollute the global namespace with, with two little functions called describe and it. I can live with that and I, I find Mocha quite okay. But those are, I think, the two big, the most popular ones. I'll be using Istanbul for cover, code coverage. Uh, I'll be using not grunt, but NPM for scripting. Uh, I'll just be using plain old assert for assert, asserting, and I will not be touching should, chai, and chai as promise for barge pole. Um, those, if you follow Stack Overflow, most of the people having problem with tests are because they've buggered up something with um, should or chai or chai as promise. They've got the, the they haven't learnt the API properly, and to be quite honest, you don't need it. And when you write tests with these should dot be should at somewhere, that's not really how we see the code working um, in in uh, real life anyway. So uh, I try to avoid those as much as possible. Okay. Is Jasmine much the same? Jasmine's um. Jasmine's come, come out of the, as far as it runs tests, yes, it comes from the behavioral driven development side of things and as the tooling is more geared for the browser. Um, I, don't, I don't use Jasmine for the back end. Um, my front end guy uses Jasmine for the front end though. But that's because he's using Angular 2 and it's all tooled to come with Jas Jasmine. And that's but Jasmine and Karma and there's a whole uh, cucumber and all of that sort of stuff is is tied up with more front end testing. I think you can use it in the back end as well. But similar sort of principle: establish a, a condition, test whether write some code to make sure that just condition. Um, can you configure the screen at all? Uh, I know. Don't worry about it. Go back to the on your touchpad, right. just do one of those ones. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that was too logical. Yeah. Okay, is that better? Yeah, but you need to go back. Oh, to that's it. as big as no. That might be better. Okay, so this is my readme. Just my notes to, to keep going. So um, I have pre-installed some things because I didn't know how good the internet was going to be. So. Um, I've got a few things here. I won't be dipping into Express. Uh, oh, this is going to happen on every one. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to try and do some testing with request. So I look at um, uh, stubbing a um, uh, an internet request with a thing called knock. Uh, SQLize and SQLite, and hopefully going to do some basic database integration tests. Istanbul is my code coverage. Mocha I've included in here um, because I will add some scripts to run that so that when you hook it up to Travis or um, if you're using GitLab, any of the GitLab runners, um, you can just invoke your tests. Uh, and as I said, knock is a, a thing for mocking re requests. So typically, the first thing I'll usually do is I'll grab a seed of some description which is set up with all of my tools and, and that sort of stuff. But if we're not doing that, then um, what we're going to do is, no, that one doesn't expand. I'm going to create a test for test folder because Mocker expects the um, test to be in the test folder, and I don't want to configure um, anything different from that. I am going to put in some Mocker options, uh, Mocker.opts. Uh, the only one, one of the common ones I use is minus minus recursive, so it's just going to go down. Um, it's just going to check out that tree and find out what's going on, find any, any JS files and run them as tests. Um, sometimes I'll have a bootstrap file in here uh, as well, um, but this will do for the moment. So, uh, if you look at my read, read me, 
So usually you'll have some sort of architectural user stories or post-it notes or whatever telling you, hey, I've got to design something, something new. Um, and um, typically we're going to have some sort of service that's going to interface with a um, database or something like that. So what we're going to do is to follow the strict link. Now, I will say that um, TDD is easy to learn. It's hard to master. Um, the big when I've worked out how to test something, I'm right. I'm, you know, TDD test first and all that sort of stuff is great. When I'm using something new, like I um, introduced myself to Falcor, Netflix is Falcor um, uh, API. Recently, I didn't have a clue how it worked, let alone how to write my tests. So. Sometimes I break my rules. I do feel naked while I'm doing it, but I do actually just rock, hack about in somewhere else on my hard drive so that my IDE doesn't think I'm, I'm doing the wrong thing. But um, yeah, it's, it's just a mental thing I've got. I've, if I'm here, I've got to do tests. Um, yeah. So um, I do do struggle a bit to do it religiously when I'm learning new stuff. So, but you know, uh, I'm more of a practical type person. Uh, so I'm going to create a new test, uh, not under there, new file. Uh, I'm going to put my source files in um, a source, source folder. Uh, just out of habit, uh, and I'm not in TypeScript, I'm in JavaScript land tonight. Um, I'm going to put that in the wrong spot. I just have .pest.js. I'm not using any sort of um, glob filter on that. It's just um, force a habit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the, a blank source file as well, just so that I can um, have that file there and it's not, not going to do an error. Okay, so I've got my few service test. If I do mocha minus w, watch the files as we're going. I've got nothing passing and no errors, which is, that's kind of good. Okay, so I'm creating a um, service here. So I'm going to name that the size alright? Yeah. Um, foo service unit tests. Okay, so we wrap everything in a describe statement. And I'm going to use some exist. Yeah, everyone comfortable with ES6 nomenclature, uh, um, brackets and things? Cool. Okay, and it should work. Assert true. True. Yeah. Okay, and. Blowing up something a little bit unknown. It was doing that in the, in the uh, train on the way down too. Need a comma. Oh, description. That's uh, WebStorm. What I physically could not type the comments. Okay, so that's good, I've got a failing test. So I'm just gonna put the assertion library in. Um, assert, and now it should be fine. Okay, so we got one test pass and that's really cool. All right. Um, okay, so I'm going to do something I typically do for a unit test. It should um, throw, should throw if um, model not, Supplied in constructor. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to surf dot throws new foo service void, and we're going to test for dd. Uh, no, um, foo required. So this is just 
something that I typically typically do. So we should have a failing service. Okay, two services and and um, applied. Of course, it isn't. So the two service is coming from um, to source two. So that's we've got two services on function. So we've still got a failing test. So constrict um, two function two service. Uh, okay, so um, I've got a missing exception. That's good. All my, my code's working well. So what am I doing here? I've got a new model. I'm going to pass it in as a uh, dependency. And what I'm going to say is if uh, not do model, just do a simple throw new error. Okay, hey, demo gods are with me tonight, that's good. Okay, so that's pretty simple. We've got a um, green test. Uh, can I refactor anything in that? Uh, not really, there's nothing there I can refactor. Uh, is there anything in there I can refactor? Probably not. Um, not a great deal. Um, okay, so that's a simple unit test. Any questions on that so far? No? So let's let's say we want to. Uh, I want to start to test the interactions with my DB now. Well, actually, what I could do here is because I know my database class is a really horribly complex object. I'm just going to leave that for um, unit tests. So what we're going to do here shortly is who service integration tests integration tests um, but I'm just going to leave that as technical debt for the moment and what have we done here? Okay. okay won't let me do that yep it should load oh, that's what I wanted. Okay, so I've got a nice little blue one down here telling me I've got some technical debt, which I will pay off unless the feature arrives. But um, okay, so now we I want to do a. I'm just going to stop that because I can't. Uh, one of the problems with Mocker is when I'm watching them, if I'm adding new files, it doesn't pick it up uh, automatically. I have to restart my my watcher. Um, so let's do a model. That we're going to so we're going to do a foo model js and we're going to do a foo model.test js and we'll just set this up as I said you should have you'll probably develop um, just grab all that for a start. Foo model uh, integration test. Okay, it should um, create a foo. Now, foo model is going to come from uh, up one, up two, source. Actually, factory. This one's going to be a factory. Um, okay, so how am I going to get that to work with my uh, database? I need a SQLize constant SQLize require SQLize, and we 
Okay, so, okay, so let's, um, let db equal new sequelize. I need to give it some parameters and I am going to, oops, I'm going to cheat with my other test that I did. that. Uh, then we, what we have to do is do a foo model. We're going to have to pass the db object to the factory method and then we're going to do db.sync force true and because that returns a promise, Mocha knows about promises so all you have to do is return one. Cool. Uh, once we do that, we can do it then. Once it's synchronized, um, actually, what I'm going to do here is let a foo equal that, and then I'm going to do a foo dot turn foo dot create. Uh, foo has a title. Okay, so I'm setting up what I want to do to test, and then I'm going to get a result. Uh, and I'm going to just do a surf.equal result.title is bar, and just give a note should set, should set the title. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So now we've got all our files set up, so what happens? Okay, foo model is not a function. I'm going to, I'll cheat a little bit of my other model here. Just to save some time. Okay, so we're just following the SQLize way. If this is MongoDB, you do uh, whatever you want, want here. So we're just setting up a model called foo and it's going to have a title that's a, that's a string and then we're going to return the model in the in the factory and oh I did too much it, uh, it passed that's most disappointing okay so it's taking a little bit of time there so it's obviously doing something um, okay actually I wanted to have a status as well so let's say um, uh, and I want the but the Default of the status has got to be um, oh, pending. What is it? Yeah, that'll do. Equal result dot status. Pending should uh, default the status. Okay. So we've had a late requirement come in. There's obviously an error there. Uh, okay, so this I can see my assertion error should default the status, so I can look through my code and find that label to, as to which where it's actually failing. So that's cool. All right, so now I can write just enough code to make that pass. So status, uh, and that will be a type is a, we'll make it a string. Defaults to. Value. Yes. Okay. Work with too many different APIs. Okay. So I've got a passing test. Now there's a lot. There's a few tests mounting up there. Uh, what I want. I, what I can do is um, do something like this and just say only do that one, and then it's only going to run that one if I want a little bit more visibility, so that I'm not running my whole stack. Um, or this one might be giving me curry, and I can skip it, uh, which means. Um, foo model integration test should create a foo. It's uh, blue, so that means that uh, I've got some technical debt to pay off in my next sprint. Uh, and those are the main two. So you can put that only on on there as well, so that you can run a whole subsuite uh, or anything like that. Okay. 
So can we do any refactoring? Well, probably not in my model, but um, I'm going to anticipate that um, I'm going to want to run a few more tests. So what I, what I do have at my disposal are some other things um, in my, my test suite. One of them is before each, which I can say to run before each of the tests. Now, when you're doing tests, it's very important not to have one test rely on the result of another test because sometimes you can't necessarily guarantee what order these are going to, to run in, being in asynchronous land, but it's also a really bad practice. So if you're doing if you're doing a test with the create something and then your next test deletes that something that you created, that's coupling two different tests together. But what you could do is say, well, um, that I want to, the instantiating the DB is just something I want to do once or, or it's gonna be common to everywhere, everywhere. So what I'll typically do is now that my tests are written, I can start refactoring my test. And so I'm gonna move this up to here and see what happens. Okay, so I've got a problem with um, DB. Um, that's the sink. Okay, well, what happens if I move the sink up here? Because that'll be okay. Because that'll return a promise. And then that means we can get rid of that, and we can get rid of that, and we can format that nicely. So I'm just the, my test is starting to get a little bit quick, quick, clearer. Um, just foo not create. So do that. Still got an error. Okay, foo's not defined. So let's let's cheat and just make it a reference. And what we can do is do that. And that means that is going to be refreshed on every test. Okay, maybe not as elegant as it could be, but I'm happy with that. So we'll refresh that and then my test is passing again. Okay, so we just show that. Yep, one test created. Okay. Um, and that becomes more important as you, you build more and more tests. Um, if you watch some of Uncle Bob Martin's um, things on test-driven development, he'll also go to another extreme and try and get the assertions down to one line as well. I've tried that. I found that um, uh, I don't get um, a warm fuzzy about that um, so much. So what you might do is wrap these in a, in a function and say assert result created and pass the result to that and um, um, just put your assertions in that. Um, I've gone down that boat that I find I spend more time mucking around trying to work out where my functions are um, and I'm sort of back to, I just have my all, all my assertions in a, in a nice um, nice area there. Is that the reusability? Or? I, I never reuse my test assertion functions, they're, they're one-off things and um, I, I find that, oh, I've got a new assertion to put in, I've got to find which function applies to which test and uh, I, I just didn't find the benefit in, in it. Some, somebody else might, but that's fine. Okay, so let's say, uh, No pizza. Cool. All right. Let's try and get a knock test in. So I'm just going to say we've we've got we've also got a requirement for a service, um, a project service, which is going to hammer a RESTful API that we've set up. Uh, what we project service test JS. Okay, so um, and again, I'm going to cheat off some muffins that I prepared earlier. Uh, that's my source, this is my test. Okay, describe. Um, Project service. Now these are going to be unit tests. Uh, well, hmm. fine line whether they're unit tests or integration tests. They're probably technically integration tests um, because I'm going through using the request library. 
Um, sometimes it's a little bit hard to draw the line because particularly if you're writing um, code that uses buffer or something like that, are you going to stub out buffer? Probably not. Um, so for me, the lines are blurred a little bit some, sometimes. Um, so it should call the API. And uh, let's grab that, that code here. And I'm going to go let instance equal new um, project service. I'm not going to have any dependencies here, but you would inject some, some sort of thing in there. Um, we're setting up knock. That I need to get the project service definition. Project service equal require um, one up to source project service. Fill that. Oops. And we've got an only. The one downside only because you end up committing those last of things, kidding yourself. But anyway, it is what it is. That's all right. So what are we doing here? So I'm creating. Uh, it's going to should call the API. I'm creating an instance. Um, I'm going to knock. I guess it's a play on mock mock the request and say if it's going if we're hitting that host and this and we're doing a get on this endpoint, I want you to reply. 200 and return that back. This is going to handle it in a promise. So return an instant uh, inv inv invoke get project, um, passing it one, and then hopefully the result will come back with a name of TDDY example. Okay, so let's quickly knock out our uh, example code. Two-minute warning. That's fine. Ah, stop it. Okay, we call the project service. Okay, so this is pretty pretty rough. We've got a, effectively a class with a get project method. We're passing it in an ID. Uh, it's going. We're going to uh, wrap the request in a promise because uh, that makes sense. So we're going to resolve out that I technically haven't written yet because I'm not testing the error, so I don't put that in yet technically. Uh, and you know, obviously this would be controlled by some sort of op options you put in the controller. Um, API uh, plus ID, we're going to get back there, an error and a response, and it's JSON, so I'm going to pass the body of the response. So if I save that, the uh, test did pass, and we'll just make that a little bit more clear down the bottom, so that, that did pass. Um, let's quickly do then, okay, so what happens if I get an error? Uh, Okay, so it should reject the promise. Now, promise rejection is a little bit tricky. Uh, so what we do is a, a done callback here. Um, we're not going to knock any request. So I want to invoke a um, address not found error. Um, my, my test assertion this. Okay, so what I'm doing, what I'm going to do here, one of the problems with trying to catch an error in a promise is um, when you, if you return it, um, if you get, if if it resolves, you get a false negative, or you don't trap an error that you think. So what we have to do is actually trap the error, assert it, um, and then uh, return, tell the tell Mocker that we've actually finished the test. And just in case I've got any syntax errors in there, I do a another catch as well. 
Um, so what we're doing is we're getting an error, just asserting that it was a DNS lookup failure, and hopefully that, uh, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Uh, oh, that's right, because I haven't written the code yet. So in compliance with the red with green refactor, so we've just written the error handling code and we saved that and uh, we didn't get the right thing happening. So what was happening there? Okay, so here's where we do have to resort to a console.log. And what did we get? Oh, there was no match. Okay, so it's a different different type of error, error but um, when I was offline, it was, yeah. Anyway, you get, get, the, um, you get the idea. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's the basics of TDD.